This is going to be more of a tech tutorial than a sewing tutorial, that's for sure. We are literally going to talk step by step on how to take photographs. So how to lighting, angles, all of that stuff, the photography part of it, and then how to actually do it on your phone. A uh, tech tutorial to take really great photos because these kinds of mirror selfies that you know, you've know you seen, we've all taken, and they just really, you know, they don't cut it right. You can't see the garment properly. You can't see what's happening. How do you even look at the back? It's just all wrong to really get an accurate guide. We're going to transform your pictures into something like this uh, that you can actually say post into a community group, send to someone online and be able to then even just look at yourself as a reference before, you know, maybe trial one, trial two, etc. And just look at these yourself to be able to compare and actually get a good adjustment because often when you're just looking in the mirror, it's actually quite hard to judge sometimes. And as I said, how do you get the back? So let's go through uh, step by step without any fancy equipment on how you can take really good photographs, just getting started, some good photographs and videos of the garments that you're wearing so you can know what changes to make from there. Let's look at what you really need. So I think you need both still pictures, so photographs um, of all the different angles, uh, you know, a front, a side front, side, side back back, that's pretty good, and all the way around is even better. And I really like videos because videos provide movement because we all know that standing there like this with it all plumb and nice looks great. But in reality, when you start moving and lift your arms, it fits a lot differently. So I like the videos for movement to see where the wrinkles form and where they, uh, where they want to sit. That for me, that's a really big tell. Okay, equipment, you only need three things. Your smartphone, which I know you have, we all have. <laughs> you need good lighting. So by good lighting, I mean a window. You want natural lighting coming in at you. There is actually one right behind you, behind here, <laughs> of natural light coming straight in. You don't want the light behind you because you'll get that like halo type look. You don't want it coming down from the top because that's where you get all of uh, like, it's going to make it look terrible because it'll put wrinkles on everything because the light's coming from the from the light. So you need to do this in front of a large open window, even outside if you can, but not in direct light, just ambient light coming in as close to a window or a door that you can get to natural diffused light. And then you need a, well, a tripod or something like that. So if you are serious, I recommend you just get yourself one of these. They are very inexpensive um, on Amazon, eBay, just a camera tripod. Uh, in lieu of a tripod, you can use a tall plant stand, a table, a bookshelf, anything that you can move around. An ironing board is a great idea. You can actually move it up and down. You can move it anywhere you want, right? You just need something mobile that you can move, preferably that you can adjust the heights a little bit. Think stack books up on top to get at the right height. You will, depending on the angle, like if you're photographing top or bottoms, how tall it needs to be, but just something. You can use anything to put your phone onto. But if you, as I said, if you're really serious, a tripod is well worth the investment. All you'll need is a little phone holder. So they all look a little bit different. Again, these are super inexpensive and it literally just will hold your phone in here. So your tripod will come with your little um, clamp here. They all come with one, might look a little bit different than this. And this is what actually attaches to the top of the tripod. So that'll come with your tripod, Richard. And so all of these just have a little screw, I think a three quarter or a quarter, quarter I think this is a quarter inch screw is um, a standard. They're all very standard, so it, it, it will fit. But just make sure the little hole in this fits your screw on your tripod and this screws on. And there you have your own uh, camera tripod ready to go. It's definitely worth it. Okay, let's look at the camera position and angle. Uh, I'm just gonna talk through a few points here before I actually set it up and show you. So you really want to see to try and get directly 90 degree angle to what you're going to uh, photographing. For example, if you're photographing the bodice of something, it is a different position than say if you're photographing pants. So you want to be sort of straight on to where you're photographing. So this would be for a bodice, right? But if I'm, bodice would be up here, 
The waist height is sort of in the middle. So this is more for a dress, right? This is about in the middle. And then down here, directly on is for say pants and skirts. Mostly the hip area is what we're looking for. Now you want to keep this straight. See if you can keep it straight. You can tilt it ever so slightly forward, but don't tilt it too much at all. Only generally because um, how we look, we generally always look down at things a little bit. So if it's ever so slightly tilted, it's fine. It'll just mimic your eye, but generally kind of think about it staying sort of straight. Just use a regular zoom. So um, avoid trying to pinch it in and out. Move the camera backwards and forwards away from you to get the right zoom. And if you can, if you can, and we'll talk about this when we go through and I'm setting up, use the back camera if you can. Why is because the front camera, whilst you can see yourself moving and everything, the actual camera quality is not as good. This is a photograph of uh, the front camera and this is another bad photograph, but using the same angle and the same lighting, but with the back camera. You can see the quality difference in them. The back camera just has better quality. But look, if you can only use the front because that's what you can see and do it at the same time, that's fine. But if you can, the back camera is always going to be the best one. And before we even get started, if I forget to mention it later, before you start, clean your camera lens. Get your little clothing and clean that lens, both front and back. Wipe it down. We don't want any smudgy, smudgy camera photos here. <laughs> clean lenses are key. Okay, we're about to get started. We actually want to, uh, I'm going to set up and we actually want to film two videos. So one is a video for movement and a video. The other video that we're taking is to actually get our still images from, because you might not have noticed, I didn't mention anything about a remote control or anything like that at all. This is how you can do it yourself, at least the easiest way that I know without any fancy equipment, okay? All right, promise it'll work. Okay, I'm going to set mine up in here because I'm a little bit limited for space. I'm going to use my tripod because, well, I have one and it's a bit easier in this limited space. But remember, you can use anything that you can pull out and possibly like put your phone on, right? And you can stack up books behind it to lean it on itself. If you don't have the tripod, I like this little book one because it actually like, I know it's great, right? It actually is like a self it just sits there by itself like this um, as a little stand. It's really great, but I'm pretty sure you probably got an iPad stand or something like that that will also work. But just figure out a way to put your um, camera straight, have it sitting straight on the box item, whatever your tripod type thing is. I'm going to set up in here and said, use my tripod. I have a huge light um, coming from this way and obviously all my, my camera lighting is all set this. So the brightest light is in front of me, even though I will be standing behind the window here, this is far brighter in front than it is behind. And that is what you want. If you can keep your background clean, but look, that's totally secondary. Don't worry about that too much. It does just make for nice pictures if you've got say all white or something like that behind you. But honestly, the lighting coming in front of you and the position and the angle is more important than what your background looks like. Okay, I'm gonna get started and set this up for, well, I'll set it up for a dress since I'm wearing a dress. But remember, if you are having just your top, your height that you need to adjust it will be up around this level. Uh, for a dress is about the middle and for pants, of course, is way down lower to actually get the correct angle. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm all set up for a dress. So something like my dress here, you wanna look at the whole dress, but you probably wanna look at the bodice even more specifically. So it's probably a good idea to do two sets of this, say for example, with what I'm wearing, and actually then raise this up higher so that it is instead of at a good dress height, it's like more here and then I could get a bodice height and actually go closer up and get that closer up shot of the bodice because well, that's where most of the fitting is anyway, right? Okay, so if you can, as I said, turn your camera around once you set it up, I'll see if mine works, but uh, if you have to do it front on, it's totally fine. Okay, just doing a little test to see if I'm still in frame or not. Actually, I'll probably stand here, so. Okay, so just in case yours does something like that too, my video has a different field of view than my photograph setting. So just make sure that if you change from video to photo, uh, 
do all of your testing on the video screen in case it changes it like mine did. Okay, now we're ready. Go ahead and film one video first. Do your first video for screenshots that we're going to take to take our still photographs from. So that means on your video, we want to stop and pause for three seconds at each image that you want to take. So stand at the front and now we count to three. One, two, three. Turn to your next position, mine's my side, count to three. One, two, three. And then turn to the back. One, two, three. And then of course you can take, you know, side front, side back, etc. Take as many as you want. I'll just keep a front, a side and a back for the purpose of this video. Okay, the next video we're going to take is for movement. So this one's quite fun. Now, if you can stand as you normally would, don't try and stand up straighter than you normally are. Have your regular posture. If you need to close your eyes to actually do this, do that. So we're just going to turn in a circle all the way around. I suggest you turn in a circle slowly all the way around so you can just see it as is and then do a second spin. But this time, what I want you to do is move around. Lift your arms up, down, move your body, crunch your body this way, crunch your body that way, lift your arms, tilt your back, move around and slowly move around as you do this. So you can see and go slow, slower than you think. This will give you a good idea where all of the wrinkles are forming, where uh, your waistline will end up sitting once you raise your arms, all these types of things. We need to see movement. Okay, but how do we make this into pictures? The video one is pretty easy, right? The one where you're moving around and jiggling around, it's a video. You can edit the front part out a little bit and the, the end part in just on your, like usually just in within your phone, no fancy editing app, you can literally just cut it out but as it is, is totally fine too. Go to your first one that you selected. Now, this is the one where we took for screenshots for pictures. So the thing is though, I don't know how to take screenshots on your particular telephone. So you will need to know that. If you don't know how, Google your telephone type. So Samsung Note, that's mine, how to take a screenshot and the answer will appear. For me, I just swipe the screen, which is really handy. So what we're going to do is uh, on those pauses, as we go through the video, take the screenshots um, as needed for them. Okay, super excited. Are you ready? Real life time, let's go. Make sure you clean that off, so. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Screenshot. Back. Screenshot. One, two, three. Side back. Screenshot. Two, three. Huh. And if you want one more from the front, just in case. I do. Yay, all right. So we have our screenshots. Let's have a look. Okay, look at this. We have screenshot front. Side, back, back, side, front. See, oh my goodness. Look how much better this picture is than that mirror selfie. And now you can even make changes, make your second trial and have an exact same replica and you can put them side by side to see what the changes you've made have made in your garment because you can see the wrinkles. They're not getting harsh light from the top and all wrinkly looking everywhere. You can see the movement from your video we have all of the movement that you can see, so you can see where those lines and everything are going. So now you have a reference guide to actually fit your, the clothing that you're wearing. You not only have a video that shows you just twirling around and actually shows movement, so you don't have to get dressed in it again to see it on yourself. You also have a video moving around so you can see what happens when you lift your arms. Where does the waistline sit? What happens when you crunch over? And see how it ends up looking once you've actually been wearing it for a little bit, right? Doing all those movements. And then you have all of these pictures as a reference. So you can put these side by side, maybe after your second toile, or you know what? These are really great to actually send to, send to somebody online, community group, or anyone to say, 
do you have any recommendations for me? How can I get rid of XYZ wrinkles or something like that that you're concerned about? It actually gives them a great photograph to be able to see uh, what is happening, the garment on you. Say so no more to those horrible mirror selfies or trying to look at the back like this in a mirror, no more. I would love to know, has this really helped you? Was this a really helpful tutorial? Uh, do leave your comments down below. And if you use your uh, pictures on social media, tag me. I'd love to know. Evelyn would help me make these pictures to fit. I would love to see them because uh, I think something as simple as just how to take good pictures can sometimes just mean all the difference in being able to see the garment on ourselves properly it makes all the difference into the garments that we make and being able to reference them as well. You might even like to just take these pictures now that you know how as your own reference of the garments that you've made against the patterns, right? Yeah, you go uh, many different places. So enjoy. Let me know below in the comments how much you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear it. And until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing. <laughs> Bye.